Thank you. Thank you. Shall I start? Thank you so much, sir. Now the program is all yours, sir. So you can start. Okay. Thank. Thank you, sir. Thank you. So good morning, everyone. Good morning, sir. To the organizers for inviting me to this online workshop on bioinformatics and introducing me to the audience. So I'll share my slides. I'll have to share the entire screen instead of this sharing. So, am I audible? Yes, sir. Clearly? Yes, sir. Yes. Sir. yes. Okay, so today I'll discuss about this uh, very important topic, sequence alignment. Sequence alignment is a very important analysis in bioinformatics. Not only in bioinformatics, it's a very important tool in entire biology. Okay, so as I have been told that the participants are starting from UG students to uh, college and university teachers. So, I will start from very beginning, very basic, so that uh, each one of you can follow. So, before going to sequence alignment, we should know what is a sequence. Okay? Now, if you think of a human cell, okay, inside the human cell there are, there is a nucleus. Okay? We all know. And Inside the nucleus, we have these chromosomes. And in a uh, normal human cell, there will be around 46 numbers of chromosomes. That we all know. And the DNA is wrapped around this uh, chromosome. DNA is wrapped around this chromosome. And we all know DNA is a double-stranded molecule uh, where it is made up of a, T, G kind of thing and they are anti-parallel. So, if one strand of DNA is in the in the 5 prime to 3 prime strand, other strand of the DNA will be in the 3 prime to 5 prime strand. And so, the uh, complementary base pairing, A pairs with T, T pairs with A, G pairs with C and these two uh, DNA strands are held together by formation of uh, certain hydrogen bonds. Like there will be two hydrogen bonds between A and T. There will be three hydrogen bonds between Z and C that we all know. Now when we define the word sequence, okay, sequence, we mean the order in which the nucleotides are arranged in this DNA strand, okay? The order in which these individual nucleotides are arranged in a DNA strand. And generally, for DNA strand, if we do not mention the direction, we always write the strand, the sequence in 5 prime to 3 prime direction, okay? If you write it in reverse direction, then you will have to specifically mentioned that it is in 3 prime to 5 prime direction. Similarly, 
sequence may be amino acid sequence of proteins also we all know proteins are um, polymers of 20 different amino acids 20 different amino acids so each of the amino acids are held together by formation of peptide bonds so the carboxyl group of one amino acid reacts with the amino group of the next amino acid and forms the peptide bond so the uh, protein sequence when we write we write it in n terminus to c terminus direction that means uh, in this side uh, the free amino group will be there there will be one amino acid some amino acid will be there then this carboxyl group will take part in uh, peptide bond formation with the next uh, amino acid the amino group of the next amino acid so the for the second amino acid this amino group will not remain free or for the first amino acid the carboxyl group will not remain free however for the last amino acid the carboxyl group will remain free so this is one this is what we mean by the direction that means when we talk n terminus that means for particular amino acid there is a free amino group and when we talk about c terminus that means uh, in this side there will be a free carboxyl group which is not taking part in peptide bond formation so when we write a dna sequence we generally write in 5 prime to 3 prime direction when we write a protein sequence we write in n terminus to c terminus direction and for rna sequence also we write it in 5 prime to 3 prime direction generally now why do we need to uh, check similarity among dna rna or protein sequences why it is required to study the similarity or dissimilarity see if we uh, think of a human body it all derived from one cell from one cell it undergoes cell division mitosis and two cells are formed these two cells further divide to form four cells like this so during each and every cell division before the cell divides there is an s phase s phase okay s phase of the cell cycle where dna replication takes place dna replication takes place and in this replication stage what happens dna is duplicated we all know it so during duplication process during replication process uh, dna polymerase enzymes they synthesize a new strand of dna on one of the parental strands of dna and we all know there are chances of errors during the dna replication and because of which uh, the DNA sequence of one of the daughter cells may not be exactly same to the original uh, its uh, mother cell. The DNA sequence may not be 100% identical. Okay? Not only that. The, the, here I am talking about uh, different cells within a single organism. Okay? There are uh, process for repairing of uh, such uh, erroneous replication of dna but still there might be uh, few nucleotides which are not exactly same with one of the uh, parental cells okay and suppose one organism okay one organism a this is the ancestor and from suppose this descendants B and C are formed 
we all know during the process of evolution mutation plays a major role okay so because of mutation this new species are formed the speciation takes place okay mutation is the most important process of uh, most important factor for evolution now if we see the mutation then there will be some differences between the dna sequence of b with dna sequence of a or dna sequence of c now if we take another organism suppose x it has got also a dna sequence now if we suppose x has very distant relationship with a b and c evolutionary then its dna sequence will be much dissimilar in comparison to the dissimilarity among the dna sequences of a b and c now when we are comparing dna sequences of different organisms or different cells even highly similar less similar actually in science there is uh, no place for such adjective high or low in science we must be very much accurate whether 97% similar or whether 28.3% similar like this we should be very much uh, precise we should be very much accurate we instead of using such adjectives highly similar low similar in science we must use precise value of the similarity or dissimilarity level so to study the similarity or dissimilarity among different dna sequences or to study similarities or dissimilarities among different rna sequences or protein sequences there is a particular analysis in bioinformatics which is known as sequence alignment okay so today we are going to discuss this particular topic sequence alignment now the definition of sequence alignment is given like this it's an attempt to compare two or more dna rna protein sequences okay we can compare uh, suppose two dna sequences or we can compare uh, suppose 10 dna sequences like this or we can compare one dna sec uh, one protein sequence uh, with another protein sequence or we can compare 10 or 20 protein sequences at a main aim of sequence alignment and once we align the sequence we can understand the mutation pattern among the sequences okay so whether in certain place substitution mutation mutation has taken place or a deletion mutation has taken place and not only the mutation pattern we can identify the conserved domains also like which portion of the dna remains conserved throughout the process of evolution so this can also be studied using uh, sequence alignment and for studying phylogenetic relationship among different organisms sequence alignment is a prerequisite that means without aligning the dna or rna or protein sequences we cannot think of uh, studying molecular phylogenetic relationships and for protein structure predictions we all know proteins are very important molecule for our body they are the building blocks of our body so many at times we need to know the structure of the protein because protein function is related to its structure so until and unless we know the structure of the protein it becomes difficult for us to know the function of the protein and there are different methods for protein 
structure determination like X-ray diffraction or X-ray X-ray crystallography, uh, then uh, NMR spectroscopy, then cryo electron microscopy. These these are experimental techniques to determine the structure of proteins. But many a times, these experimental techniques fail to determine the structure of protein, and in such case, bioinformatics plays a crucial role in predicting the structure of such proteins. Means determination is always the first preference. If you can determine the structure of the protein, that is well and good. But many a times, this there are because of some limitations, technical limitations, it may be impossible or it may be very difficult for us to determine the structure of protein. And in such case, we may have to go for predicting the structure of protein and for protein structure prediction using tools like homology modeling or comparative modeling sequence alignment is a unavoidable state okay first we must align the sequence then only we can go for predicting the structure of such proteins and there are many applications of sequence alignment so Like I have already said, sequence alignment is an attempt to study the similarities or dissimilarities among sequences. Now, the main aim is if we write different. Suppose this is one. Uh, this is one DNA sequence. Okay. This is another day in a sequence, and once we align the sequence, our attempt is: this is one column to put to obtain maximum number of columns with similar alphabets. Like in this particular column, T and T is there. In this particular column, C and C is there. In the this particular column, C and C is there. So, in sequence alignment. Our main aim is to obtain maximum number of such columns having similar alphabets, okay? And to obtain maximum number of columns with similar alphabets, in certain positions we may have to insert uh, some gaps, okay? These are the gaps, and because of inserting the, these gaps, we are getting these columns with similar alphabets. Otherwise, we will have to align this C with this Z, okay? Which will not be similar. Or this A with this G, this will also not be similar. So, Sequence alignment is technically, if we say, it's a, it's an attempt to obtain maximum number of columns with similar alphabets, uh, and to obtain maximum number of columns with similar alphabets, we have to insert gaps in certain positions. Okay, so. Why sequence dissimilarity or dissimilarity occurs? That I have already said. Okay. Now we know this. Uh, the main cause of sequence dissimilarity is mutation, and mutations are of different types, like substitution, when one nucleotide is replaced by another nucleotide. Like initially the sequence was A T A, and we found. That this T got replaced by G, and the sequence became A G A. So this T got substituted. And what kind of substitution it is? Like T is a uh, pyrimidine nucleotide, G is a purine nucleotide. So T to G, it is a transversion mutation. So these things can also be studied after we align the sequence. Uh, similarly, insertion mutation, like 
at a certain location one new nucleotide is inserted in between two existing nucleotides suppose initially there was a n a a a and this g got inserted between this a so this is an insertion mutation see so, uh, there is another type of mutation that is deletion in deletion what happens at a certain location one existing nucleotide is deleted like here initially the nucleotide sequence was a c t g during the course of evolution okay this t may get deleted and because of that the sequence will be a c g okay a c g a c g now when we align these two sequences we will have to insert one gap here a c one gap and g so this gap indicates that there was something in this position which got deleted so gap corresponds to both insertion and deletion mutation because if we write here this a c g then this gap we can also say that this t might have been inserted in this particular position so insertion and deletion mutation these are together called indel mutations insertion in for insertion and del for deletion so together they are called insertion or deletion mutation now types okay what are different types of sequence alignment there is one particular type called global alignment or global sequence alignment here in global sequence alignment suppose I, one example i am uh, giving instead of sequence take these four faces okay this is a face of a dog face of a monkey a face of a human face of a cat now whatever data we have when we compare completely okay from the beginning to the end that is called global sequence alignment like this nose we can compare with this nose this nose and this nose whether they are similar or not this eye we can compare with this eye this eye or this eye this ear we, we can compare with this ear this ear or this ear okay so whatever data we have when we compare completely we call it global alignment if we come to sequence level like there are four dna sequences suppose cytochrome c oxidase one gene of uh four different species human some species of monkey cat and dog these are unaligned sequences we are yet to align the sequence if you see before aligning also this a in all these species in this particular position it is a it is g throughout okay similarly it is g but after certain positions okay you see it is t here it is a here it is g here it is t here they are not matching they are not matching here also if you see in this side the nucleotides are not matching here a t g t t they are not matching no if we insert certain gaps in this positions okay suppose in box 1 gene of cat we inserted two gaps at this position and in box 1 gene of monkey we inserted one gap at this position we find that these nucleotides which were not matching initially they are also matching okay like t t t t a a a a g g g g like this and similarly g g g g like c c c c like this 
so these nucleotides these columns are also having similar alphabets now so that means after aligning we got more number of columns with similar alphabets now after aligning what have we understood okay what have we understood we understood that during the course of evolution suppose human cat monkey and dog are evolutionarily closely related and during the course of evolution this portion remains conserved no mutation takes place however suppose cat is descendant of human okay we do not know whether cat is descendant or human is descendant or cat is ancestor or human is ancestor suppose human is ancestor of cat then in cat okay these two nucleotides c and g might have got deleted okay or if human is the descendant then we can say initially this c and g were not there and when this cat genome got mutated this cat cox1 gene got mutated this c and g got inserted and because of which human got evolved similarly for cox1 monkey gene also this uh, g got deleted c was there but this g got deleted so after alignment we can understand the mutation pattern however if we see there is a substitution mutation like in human cat and monkey in this particular position there is a however in dog this a got substituted by this t so there is a substitution mutation and what kind of substitu substitution it is it is a transversion because a's are purine all this a a a these are purine and this t is a pyrimidine nucleotide so after alignment we can identify the conserved region we can identify the mutation pattern whether it is an insertion mutation or deletion mutation or whether it is a transition mutation or transversion mutation so this is about global alignment generally for global alignment we follow this algorithm middleman kunch algorithm okay so i'll discuss these algorithms one by one very briefly because i have seen the teachers need to teach these algorithms to their students and many a times they find it difficult i'll uh, discuss this algorithm very briefly in a very easy way suppose okay before discussing the algorithm i'll discuss the second type that is local alignment local alignment again before going to the sequence level suppose these two data we have in one case we have this data and on another case we have this data now if we compare this portion of this frog with this portion will we get similarity obviously no okay because we cannot compare the eye of a frog with the toe of a man or we cannot compare the mouth of a frog with the heel of a uh, man so here we should know that we'll have to compare this data with this portion of the organism like this now we can compare this hind limbs of this frog with the uh, feet or the leg of a human like whether the toes are matching we can compare now but if we compare the eye with the fingers or the toes obviously we will not find any significant similarity so in such case we do not compare the entire data which is available for all the organisms like for all one organism we will compare 
this data with only this portion of the data for another organization. Okay? So in such case, we call it local alignment. So we'll compare only with this portion. Okay? Come to the sequence level. Suppose the upper one is sequenced from one organism, this one, okay? And this is from another organism, suppose. Now, we all know DNA is made up of these four nucleotides A, T, G, and C. If we insert certain gaps, suppose this G will match with this G, this G will match with this G, this A with this A, this T with this T, this G with this G, this C with this C, like this. However, we may not get the exact evolutionary relationship or meaning if we align by inserting many gaps. If instead of aligning to this position, if we align to this position, we will find more meaningful alignment or more meaningful relationship. That means, suppose the upper one, the upper sequence is a genome sequence. Okay? Suppose human genome sequence. And the lower one is suppose human uh, box one gene. So, obviously human COX-1 gene is a part of human genome. So, to some position of the human genome, this human COX-1 gene will match completely. So, we should, we, our aim is to find out to which portion of the human genome this COX-1 gene is exactly matching. Okay? That means, in local alignment, we try to find out to which portion of the longer DNA sequence, the shorter DNA sequence is matching. Okay? And it may match 100% or it may not match 100%. Suppose you, if you have human genome in one hand and you are comparing a monkey gene, then you may not get 100% but say 98% similarity you may get. So in some position, here also you may find some uh, substitution or insertion or deletion kind of mutation. So this is called local alignment and for local alignment, we use this algorithm that is smith waterman algorithm. Now these are the main algorithms for sequence alignment. There are many other algorithms like dot plot method is a very primitive method for sequence alignment, but uh, if we talk of dynamic programming algorithm, this little by notch algorithm is a very popular algorithm for global alignment. Then smith waterman algorithm is a very popular alignment for local alignment. But however, nowadays, uh, this BLAST, BLAST is a not very recent tool, it's a very old tool. Uh, so BLAST, which stands for Basic Local Alignment Search Tool, it is a heuristic local alignment. These are the main algorithms for sequence alignment. We will discuss one by one briefly to have an idea about these alignment techniques and uh, these algorithms. So the needleman notch algorithm, it was first published in 1970 in the Journal of Molecular Biology by Needleman and Unge. And it performs global alignment between two sequences. And it can be uh, used for aligning protein sequences also, both protein and nucleotide sequences. Similarly, okay. Now come to the needleman unge algorithm. Suppose you have these two sequences sequence 1 and sequence 2. 
suppose sequence 1 is a gene x okay sequence 1 is gene x suppose from human and this is from suppose monkey now you are asked to align these sequences uh, using middleman on algorithm or our aim is to find out the global alignment between these two genes gene x between human and monkey now if we see the unaligned sequence a and a are similar this a and a are similar this t and t are similar but g and c are not similar c and t are not similar t and a are not similar g and t are not similar t and a are not similar now for the unaligned sequence if you are asked to align the sequence and compute the similarity level now you will have to give some numerical value to express the similarity level you will have to calculate the alignment score now we can take some numerical values like suppose for each match will add plus one that means a and a are matching in both the sequences sequence one and sequence two will add one okay then for the second nucleotide t and t one plus one it becomes two okay so, so for the unaligned sequence if we calculate the similarity score we are getting two now let's align the sequence and calculate the similarity score and see what happens okay so now for gap again we are giving minus one so against a there is a gap that means again you will have to subtract one two minus one will become one again there are certain mismatches also like gc mismatch ct mismatch ta mismatch but mismatch we are considering zero so here actually the alignment score or the similarity score is one before aligning the sequence now we will align the sequence then we will calculate the similarity score to align the sequence okay uh, first what we will do let's put uh, let's write the first sequence horizontally in the in this table from the third column remember we write the sequence from the third column and the second sequence we write vertically from the third row okay so we'll align this sequence first sequence is written uh, horizontally like this in the first row from the third column and the second sequence is written vertically from the third row in the first column okay now we'll compare the sequences consider this as the origin of the graph paper put and put a zero here okay now and fill this the second row with multiples of gap penalty okay this is the gap penalty this is called gap penalty gap penalty is minus 1 so here it will be minus 1 and multiples of gap penalty so it will be minus 2 minus 3 minus 4 minus 5 minus 6 minus 7 minus 8 similarly the second column also you to fill up with multiples of gap penalty why we need to fill up this with multiples of gap penalty we'll discuss okay so here also it will be multiples of gap penalty zero then this one minus this one minus two minus three minus four minus five minus six then this one minus seven okay so like this so 
now we have to fill up certain numerical values in this cells okay what we will put in this particular cell now see to fill up the value in a particular cell we will have three options okay suppose you want to this cell is this particular cell is this cell okay this is the cell now this cell can be filled up by taking values from its three surrounding cells is three cells its immediate upper cell its this one its immediate left cell this one its immediate diagonal cell this one okay remember one thing if we take the value from its upper cell or from left cell we add gap penalty that means here in the upper cell suppose it is minus 1 so if we take the value from this upper cell here we will have to take minus 1 then add gap penalty minus 1 minus 1 becomes minus 2 okay so is the case for the left cell if you take the value from its left cell in the left cell the value is minus 1 then minus 1 again gap penalty is minus 1 so minus 1 minus 1 is minus 2 but if you take the value from the diagonal cell you will have to see whether it is a match or a mismatch how will we see we are filling the value in this particular cell okay so here it is if you see upward here it is a and if you see leftward here it is a so a and a a and a is a match so match four is plus 1 so in the diagonal cell value is 0 0 plus 1 is 1 so we get three values from three different sources which value we consider the largest value so 1 minus 2 and minus 2 we will consider the largest value that is 1 so from three different sources we get three different values from upper cell we got minus 1 minus 1 minus 2 from left cell also we got minus 1 minus 1 Minus two. However, from the diagonal cell, we got zero plus one. That is one. And out of these three, the largest value is one. So we put one in this particular cell. So, what will be the value in the next cell? It will be zero if you calculate. Because if you take the value from for this particular cell, okay? If you take the value from its upper cell. it will be minus 2 then gap penalty is minus 1 so minus 2 minus 1 will be minus 3 okay then uh for if you take the value from its immediate left cell so in immediate left cell the value is 1 so 1 then gap penalty minus 1 it becomes 0 however if you take the value from its diagonal cell in diagonal cell the value is minus 1 and it is t and a it is a mismatch so minus 1 plus 0 is minus 1 so what we will put here we will put 0 as the largest value so here it will be 0 i hope this is clear so in this way you will have to fill up the value in this complete table so here if you see the next cell it will be minus 3 minus 1 if you take the value from the upper cell it will be minus 4 if you take the value from its left cell it will be 0 then gap penalty is minus 1 so 0 minus 1 it will be minus 1 however if you take the value from its diagonal cell you will have to see whether it is a match g and a it is not a match it is a mismatch g and a are not matching So minus two then gap uh, sorry mismatch for zero is minus two. So largest value among these three is minus one. So we'll consider minus one here. So in this way you will have to complete the table. Okay, 
with these values. Now, after completing the value, we got this table. Now, now in needle manual algorithm, what we do, we see the value in the last cell. In the table, this is the last cell. It is that means the cell in the last row and the last column. Okay, and the value is five here. So our aim is to find out how we have obtained this value. This five we can never get from this tree because this tree can never come. This tree can never give five because if we take the value from the upper cell, we'll always have to add the gap penalty minus one. So if we take the value from this tree, it would have been three minus one, two. We will never get five. Okay. Similarly, if we take the value from this tree, because to get this value in the last cell, only these three cells are the sources. It's three surrounding cells. From upper cell it cannot come because it would have been three minus one two. From the left cell also same case because in the left cell also it is three and gap penalty is minus one so it would have been three minus one two. If this value can only come from this cell that is four. So this five has come from four because this a and a are. Similar or identical. So this four plus match four plus one becomes five. Similarly, this four can never come from this two or this two. This four can only come from this three because this t and this t are matching. So three plus match four one became four. Similarly, this three can never come from this two. Or this two, it can only come from this tree because it is G and A mismatch. So three plus zero gave three. This tree can never come from this one or this two. This tree can only come from this two. This two can never come from this zero or this two. This two can only come from this one because this C and C are matching. So one plus match score is two. This one can come from this zero as well as this two. But to get one from this zero, okay, this G and T. They are not matching, so this one cannot come from this zero. Although there was a possibility, but it has not come. This one has come from this two only. Okay, then this two has come from this one, and this one has come from this zero, like this. So, <coughs> in Nidelman-Unch algorithm, after constructing the Uh, there is some problem in my other computer, so I am taking from this computer. Okay, sir. <laughs> Just a minute. Okay, sir. Am I audible? Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay. I'm sharing the slides from my other computer. Huh? Okay, sir. Just a minute.
so in between if you have any questions you can ask My slides are visible. Yes, sir. Slides are visible. So we got this uh, table, and uh, if we see how we have obtained the value in the last cell, so this is the path actually through which we have obtained uh, the value in the last cell. So this five we have obtained from this four, this four we have obtained from this three, this three from this three, this three from this two. This one from this, uh, this two from this one, this one from this two, this two from this one, this one from this zero. So this is the path. Now here, we need to uh, note down the arrow directions very carefully. So these are the arrow directions. If we see from the this side, okay, from the last side, from this side, if we start. You can see these are the arrow directions. Okay, there is one diagonal arrow, second diagonal arrow, third diagonal arrow, fourth diagonal arrow, fifth diagonal arrow. So there are five diagonal arrows. Okay, then one horizontal arrow again, then two diagonal arrows. Okay, now for if we take if you get diagonal arrow from the right hand side you start okay from this side if you start you take for each diagonal arrow you take one alphabet from the first sequence and one alphabet from the second sequence like this uh, here for this diagonal arrow the first diagonal arrow this one will take one alphabet from here and one alphabet from here we'll write it like this a and a okay <coughs> For the second diagonal arrow, this one will take the second alphabet from both the sequences T and T. So we'll write T and T. For the third diagonal arrow, this one will take the third alphabet in both the sequences from right direction. Okay, third is G, so we'll write G here and here it is A. So we'll write A. So wherever there is a diagonal arrow, you need not check whether it is a match or a mismatch. You just write it below. A below this A. Okay? Then this T below this T, like this, in the same column. So for the fourth diagonal arrow, we'll write this T with this T. So we'll write this T with this T. For the fifth diagonal arrow, we'll write this C with this C. This C with this C. And for the horizontal arrow, since this horizontal arrow is pointing towards the second sequence, so from the first sequence, we will take one alphabet, that is G, this one. And against this alphabet, we will insert one cap. Remember, when we get horizontal arrow like this, we insert gap in the vertical sequence. And sometimes we get uh, arrows like vertical arrow, upward in upward direction, okay? When we get arrow in upward direction, we put the gap in the uh, this uh, horizontal sequence, okay, this one. So since here the arrow is horizontal, so we take one alphabet from the first nucleotide, first sequence, that is G we have put, and in the second sequence we have inserted this gap. Then. Again, one diagonal arrow, this one. So this diagonal arrow, we again, we take one alphabet from the first sequence and one alphabet from the second sequence. So T with T. Then 
the last diagonal arrow this one we take this a and a so this is the alignment like this so this is the alignment now if we see now we have aligned the sequence so now we can see a and a are matching t and t are matching c and c are matching t and t are matching t and t are matching a and a are matching okay but initially before alignment if you have noticed only these portions were matching rest of the portions were not matching but since we have inserted a gap in the third position of the second sequence we are getting more columns with similar alphabets now if we see how many matches are there 1 2 3 4 5 6 so there are six matches match six how many mismatches are there mismatch is this one between g and a so there is one mismatch how many gaps are there this one so gap so now if you calculate this score here how many matches 6 6 into plus 1 is 6 6 into 1 is 6 how many mismatches 1 mismatch score is 0 so 1 into 0 is 0 how many gaps 1 so gap is minus 1 1 into minus 1 is minus 1 so total alignment score now we are getting is 6 minus 1 is 5 okay so before alignment we were getting alignment score or similarity score which was 1 now we are getting similarity score 5 that is why aligning is important and if your alignment is correct this alignment score will always match with the la la value in the last cell of the table so this this two will always match okay this is about nidelman unch algorithm so if you have anything to ask in nidelman unch algorithm i am ready to answer please if any participants has got any confusion please tell me I'll start the next algorithm that is Smith-Waterman algorithm. Smith-Waterman algorithm is for determining similar region between two nucleotide or protein sequences, and it was first published in 1981. And uh, it is also a dynamic programming algorithm, and it is a modification of Nidelman-Unch algorithm. So. smith waterman algorithm is for local alignment suppose uh, here uh, this is sequence 1 and this is sequence 2 and our aim is to uh, align the sequences using smith waterman algorithm remember one thing for smith waterman algorithm or for local alignment one sequence is generally comparatively longer than the second sequences however for global alignment generally the sequences are of comparable length they are almost equal not exactly equal but they are almost equal so for your my kam kuris so we'll align the sequences using 
smith waterman algorithm sequence 1 and sequence 2 exactly same way like we constructed the table in needleman and algorithm here also we construct a table like this okay we write the first sequence in the first row from the third column and we write the second sequence from the third row in the first column okay and here also suppose for calculation of the similarity level we need some numerical values excuse me i have some water so first okay since i have already told you smith waterman algorithm is a modification of needleman unz algorithm so what are the modifications here no negative value is allowed in the table okay so if you remember if you recall this needleman unz algorithm there were minus 6 minus 4 minus 5 minus 4 minus 3 minus 1 like this so there were negative values so here smith waterman did some modification to the needleman unz algorithm and the most important modification is no negative value is allowed in the table whenever and wherever a negative value appears during calculation it is replaced by a zero calculation procedure is exactly same but means you will have all the three sources like the upper cell the left cell or the diagonal cell as the sources if you take the value from the upper cell you will have to add gap penalty if you take the value from the left cell you will have to add gap penalty and if you take the value from the diagonal cell you will have to add match or mismatch score depending on whether the nucleotides or the alphabets are matching or not matching so but and you will have to consider the largest value if the largest value is a negative value you will have to replace it with a zero you cannot write the negative value in the table and uh, for tracing back the path like we started from the last cell of the table here instead of starting from the last cell we start from the largest value in the table Uh, preferably in the last row or in the last column of the table not from the last cell but largest value preferably in the last row or in the last column of the table so these are the modifications made by uh, smith waterman of, uh, from the needleman unz algorithm okay Just a minute. Its slides are creating some problem. I'm logging in from the other computer. Okay. Okay, sir. This is creating problem. Okay, sir.
So your mic is muted, I think. Yes, is it okay now? Yes, sir. Okay. So, so, the calculation procedure is exactly same as I have already told you. So, in the very first cell, we put a zero here and now, we put multiples of gap penalty here. Why we put multiples of gap penalty? See, as I already told you, there are three options. Okay. Here, with respect to this particular sale, what are the options? This is one option. It's immediate upper sale. This is one option. And this is one option. In this option, there is no numerical value. Here it is A. So you cannot take the value from its upper cell. In the diagonal cell also there is no value, nothing is there, nothing is there. But in the left cell there is one zero. And here if you take the value from the left cell you will have to add the gap penalty. Okay. Here you should have put minus two if it is needleman on algorithm okay if it is needleman on algorithm we'll have to put minus 2 then here minus 4 minus 6 like this but i have already told you this minus 2 is not allowed because negative values are not allowed in the table so here instead of minus 2 we'll put a zero here okay so similarly this will also be zero similarly this will also be zero but in needleman on algorithm, we'll put multiples of gap penalty. Whatever be the value negative, we'll put it as it is. So here, the first, this second row will be filled up with zeros. The second column will also be filled up with zeros. Okay. Now, we'll have to fill up the value in this particular cell. What we will put here. So we have now three options these three cells okay so if we take the value from the upper cell we'll have to add gap penalty so zero gap penalty is suppose minus two now zero minus two it will be minus two i'll write the options if we take it from upper one it will be minus two similarly if we take the value from this cell left cell then again again zero minus two minus two but if we take the value from the diagonal cell, this one, okay, then it will be C and A mismatch. Zero and mismatch code is minus one. So here we will get minus one. What is the largest value among these three? It is minus one. So we will consider minus one. The largest value is minus one. But as I have already told you, if the largest value is negative, it is also replaced by 0. So, we will write 0 here. So, we will put 0 here. Okay. Similarly, what we will put here? This cell, this cell. What we will put? If we take the upper cell, it will be 0, minus 2, minus 2. Here also it will be 0, minus 2, minus 2. Here also it is TC mismatch. 0 minus 1 minus 1 largest value is minus 1 so we'll have to put 0 oh, so yeah we'll have to put 0 so but here if we see 0 minus 2 minus 2 0 minus 2 minus 2 but 0 c and c match so match score is plus 2 so we'll add 2 and 2 is the largest value so we'll put 2 we'll put only positive values as it is Negative values are replaced by 0. So, if we complete the table now, it will be like this. Because this 2 has come, because C and C, it is match. Okay? So, it has come from this 0. 0 plus 2, 
it is 2. If we go to the second row, it, it will be like this. Okay. Now, why this has come 4? Because in this particular cell, this 4 has come from this 2. Okay. This 4 has come from this 2. 2 plus match penalty, match score. It is match because G and G it is a match. So this 2 plus 2 it has become 4. So in this way we can complete the table like this. Now as I have already told you instead of starting from the last cell look for the largest value and that too preferably in the last column or in the last row okay so here the largest value is 7 okay now how this 7 has come this 7 can never come from this tree this tree because it would have been 3 minus 2 1 or it can never come from this tree because 3 minus 2 1 so this 7 has come from this 5 this 5 has come from this 6 this 6 has come from this 4 this 4 has come from this 2 this 2 has come from this 0 so this is the path so this 7 we have got from this part so again note down the arrow directions we have 1 2 3 4 5 diagonal arrows now so these are the 5 diagonal arrows okay so for each diagonal arrow we will put one alphabet from each sequence now for this diagonal arrow which alphabet will put this diagonal arrow corresponds to this g and this g c this okay this diagonal arrow this one is for this g and this g that is why we will put this G in the first sequence and this G in the second sequence like this. Okay. This G, this G in the first sequence because of this diagonal arrow. For this diagonal arrow, this one second diagonal arrow, this A with this T. So it will be A here and it will be T here like this so the alignment will be like this now first sequence is not complete the sequence first sequence was not C Z T A G first sequence was A T G C G T A G C G so we will have to write it completely A T G because we have aligned only up to this portion up to this portion okay this with this we have a line so this portions remain unaligned we will have to write it this portions remain unaligned and this portions also remain unaligned so here if you see now the we are aligning only this portion this portion of the sequence this portion of the sequence the black nucleotides. Now, how many matches are there? C and C match, G and G match, T and T match, G and G match. A and T are not matching. So, there are four matches, four matches. How many mismatch? This one. This one is a mismatch, A and T. So, one mismatch. One mismatch so for 4 match match score is 2 plus 2 4 into 2 it will be 8 and for 1 mismatch mismatch is minus 1 here so 1 into minus 1 is minus 1 and alignment score will get 7 see here we are considering only this portion of the sequence for the alignment we are not inserting any gaps here. We are not inserting any gaps here or here. 
if you insert gaps here it you will get the scores in negative so this is not our aim our aim is to find out to which portion of the longer sequence this short sequence is matching okay so we can say that this portion of the longer sequence this portion of the longer sequence this short sequence is matching okay so this is the local sequence alignment using smith waterman algorithm so we have calculated the score like this and this seven the alignment score or the similarity score will match with this value if the alignment is correct so there is another type of alignment blast or similarly fasta is also there uh, fast alignment blast is uh, maintained by generally maintained by ncbi blast stands for basic local alignment search tool it finds regions of local similarity between sequences the program compares nucleotide or protein sequences to sequence databases and calculates the statistical significance of matches okay so i'll discuss it briefly and in the afternoon session if time permits we'll do this practical so there are uh, these major types of blast suppose you have a dna sequence or a nucleotide sequence it may be dna sequence it may be rna sequence and you want to look for uh similar sequences in the nucleotide sequence databases you know bioinformatics uh, has got two main components in one hand we have got databases on the other hand we have got analysis software so uh, there are different databases like ncbi gene bank is a nucleotide sequence database suppose you want to see you have a dna sequence with you okay suppose this is a dna sequence and you want to see in the databases obviously in the databases there will be millions of sequences so to which sequence in the database our sequence is having similarity and what level of similarity okay the our sequence is generally called the query sequence is called the query sequence and these are database sequences or the subject sequences now depending on the type of query sequence and the database we use there are different types of blast okay when your query sequence is a nucleotide sequence and you select a nucleotide sequence database like ncbi gene bank we select nucleotide blast or blast n it is also called blast n okay when your query sequence is a protein sequence or amino acid sequence of protein and you perform similarity search against protein sequence databases like ncbi protein or uniplot database it is called protein blast or blast p okay it is called blast p now you can also search for suppose you have a gene sequence with you what kind of new uh, protein does it code for that means you can take a dna sequence as a query sequence and you can search it against protein sequence databases protein sequence databases and you can see in which frame like there there are different open reading frames different reading frames so in which frame this gene got translated to protein okay this can also this can be studied using the tool blastx just reverse is 
the protein uh, means your query sequence will be a protein sequence amino acid sequence of protein and when your database will be a nucleotide sequence database okay then you will have to use t blast n this is also very important to know which codon was used in the uh, translation so you can have a have an amino acid sequence and you can see what is the exact gene sequence suppose th there is one in the protein sequence there is one amino acid suppose uh, valine okay this valine must be, may be coded by suppose zcg or it may be coded coded by suppose zzz or it may also be coded by suppose uh, zzt so in this way what which codon was exactly used for coding this valine uh, to know that we can use t blast n so how to perform blast suppose we have this uh, dna sequence with us now your aim is to know what dna is it okay so what we can do we can perform blast you take this dna sequence dna is written like this dna sequences are written see here we have not written any direction that means you should know this side is the 5 prime end of the dna and this side is the 3 prime end of the dna okay so this is a single strand of dna and if you want to know what dna it is what we can do we can perform blast against nucleotide sequence database okay or any other sequence database for blast then we'll select it as nucleotide sequence database so this is the blast in this is the blast interface it looks like this and uh, we put our dna sequence in this window this is called the query sequence okay enter query sequence we put our sequence like this and database we select here suppose we are performing blast n or nucleotide blast so we'll have to select nucleotide collection that means all nucleotide database collections or databases are selected then blast algorithm will uh, perform searches and it will tell us that this query sequence is from suppose having similarity with this species and this genes so we can see the similarity level percent identity with the first sequence it has got 100% identity and it is lipia alba rbcl gene rbcl gene you know rbcl is rubisco large unit coding gene which is a um, gene for chloroplast gene uh, which is which plays crucial role in carbon fixation during photosynthesis okay so and with the second sequence with the second sequence we have got 99.63% this is some unidentified and 99.26% similarity with another lipia species then again 99.26% similarity with lantana camara obviously it will obviously it will be somewhat similar with uh, there is a uh, tremendous voltage fluctuation because of which my ups is not giving back up so i am connecting from my laptop again okay, so sir. just few minutes again this is Can you see the slide?
Can you see the slide? The slide size is very small. I don't know what happened. Anyways, so since Lipia Alba and Lantana Camera both belong to the family Verbenaceae, these are different uh, plants, okay, belong to the family Verbenaceae, obviously they will have certain level of similarity. They belong to the same family. But since it is having highest similarity, 100% with Lipia Alba, we can also say that our sequence may also be Lipia Alba RBCL gene sequence. And we can also see the uh, alignment, how the query sequence is matching with subject or database sequence. A is matching with A, like T is matching with T, like this. So, here we need to know few things. What is the uh, identity level out of 539 nucleotides? All 539 are matching. And E value is 0.0. .0. What is E value? We'll discuss in the second half. Since my Power backup is not perfect today. I'll discuss this in the second half again. And uh, okay, sir. we can see that our sequence can be identified like this using BLAST tool. Okay. So this sequence was submitted from our lab only. Uh, so this is about sequence alignment. And in the second half, we'll do some practical. So with this, I'd like to conclude. So if you have any questions, you can ask. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir, for your meaningful session. And we have learned a lot about sequence alignment. And I think our participants also have benefited from it. Anyone have any queries? They can ask or write in the chat box. Anything you'd like to ask? Jakaria, you are not audible. Sir, sir, I think there are no hmm. queries. Okay, okay. Sir, thank you so much, sir. Now the first session is ended and we will meet again at 1.30 p.m. for the second section that is practical session. Thank you so much, sir. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.